Hello! In this section, we will continue our development of the digital clock in Excel using mainly VBA. I just want to go back and uh, I don't know if you remember uh, in the previous section we talked about how to handle shapes, how to find, how to detect the position of the shapes and here I'm showing how the, the coordinates of the shapes are measured you see here these arrows and uh, here are the uh, coordinates and I changed a little bit the macro I can run say I can move this shape here and the other one I can determine the positions and I wrote a little VBA section to adjust the, the arrows to show the coordinates, how the coordinates are measured. And I also have another macro that um, measures the coordinates right here relative of the red rectangle with respect to the yellow rectangle. So let me run it. You see, that's how the absolute coordinates are measured for the yellow rectangle and the relative coordinates of the red rectangle are measured with respect to the yellow rectangle the way you see in this picture. So the vertical dimension g increases down, the horizontal dimension increases to the right. And this being said, I'm gonna take this um, worksheet and copy it to the end. and call it um, part 2 actually yeah part actually let's call it part 3 because part 2 this was part 2 so let's uh, change this into part 2 And this is the worksheet I created with these um, arrows, okay? This is the original we created last time. I made this, but we're not going to get into details today. And then I copy this, the first one, into part 3. So this is part 3 of the tutorial. We can uh, delete this, we don't care about this. You can also delete the rectangles and start bringing the digits in. So first uh, let's create a box for the clock. Some shapes. And I like this uh, rectangle with rounded corners. We go here at uh, Format Shape and uh, let's uh, use a line that is maybe 40 units thick the line let's see I'm gonna choose this color and the center for the center of the box let's choose uh, the fill black so this will be our clock <clears throat> and today we will just make one digit, okay? The seconds. The digit, the seconds actually is comprised of two digits. A slow moving digit, ten, the tenths of a sec, ten, tenths of seconds, and the fast moving digit that is the seconds, the individual seconds. So let's say is one thirty and forty seven seconds. So 4, 47 seconds, 4 is the most significant digit, it moves slowly, and 7 is the fast digit, the least significant digit of the seconds. So today we will just implement the least significant, the fastest second, because we will be able to prove that the animation works correctly. The animation that we will create, of course. So now 
I'm going here in PowerPoint and um, one thing I like to do, let's copy this, paste it here and um, go here, ungroup, wait, no I don't want to do that. We can go to each, in each one and uh, no fill, okay? So I'm going to do this for all of them. And then I'm going to highlight them. Control C and bring them in the in the worksheet, okay? So let's see. I would like to make them a little bit bigger, so we can go here at find, uh, find and select, uh, bring a different cursor, an arrow, and um, size, let's lock the aspect ratio, make it, yeah, let's say this one. Another thing I would like to do is rename the shapes, since we will use all these 10 shapes to run the seconds, we need to give VBA a clear distinction, a unique name for each shape, so the VBA knows when to make one of them visible and make the rest invisible. So, since this being second, let's start the name with an S. This being the second digit, the, the, least, signif the least significant, yes, the fast digit, let's call it S2 and then all of these are S2 but this will be S2 underscore 0, S2 underscore 1 and so on and so forth. So we click on the picture on the sprite and call this S right here in this box S2 underscore 0. Hit return. Okay. Click again you see the name there before was what uh, it was group of group something a, n a number. So let's copy this the first three characters, control C, and then come here, paste one. Okay? So this is S20, S21, here, S22, S23, S24. Wait, five, this is five, six, let's do six, eight, and let's do nine. Let's uh, verify, click on these. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this being said, let's uh, write a little macro that prints the time. In uh, For now, just to test the macro, let's print the time in uh, cell D34. So we go here and uh, sheet number three say sub time test and inside let's say you can go on the internet and type time in VBA and see try to understand the formulas try to test them yourself Try to find them, search them and find them yourself and test on a micro macro, on a, on a subroutine that is very small. I know what it is. Okay, so D34, 
34 because I used it before. I don't memorize, but I just used it not long ago. So D34 in cell D34 in square brackets is equal to time. So let's uh, run it. And we got this, okay? You see? Now, instead of time, let's extract the seconds. Okay, so second, second of time. The only problem is this was already formatted automatically for full time, so it's not gonna run. Let's just delete this and uh, we can go uh, format, let me see, nah, let's just go in uh, D35, okay, and run this. You see, 13 seconds, check this out. Now it's, uh, whatever, 20 seconds, so this was long, a uh, few seconds before. If we click again, 25, 26, 27, I I set the cursor inside the macro and run it. Now let's build a loop, okay? So do, that's how the loop, do loop starts and ends with the word loop. So we can start this and one more thing we need to put here, a statement called do events. This do events means every time the loop runs, everything on the sheet will update. Charts, numbers, otherwise we, we are gonna run into troubles, uh, into trouble. The thing might not update all the time and if we try to stop it, it's gonna crash. The new Excel is gonna crash. The old Excel is gonna do fine, but the, the new Excel, if you don't put these do events, this is just from experience, it will crash. So check this out. You're supposed to see seconds rolling from zero to 60 and then go back to zero and continue. Check this out. 29, 30, you see, is running. So now we do have a clock. But this is just a clock um, showing seconds, okay? I mean, today we just, we will just have one digit running. We can do one thing here. If we want to extract the last digit, we need to do this. Check this out. I'm going to write the formula here. This is equal to this. Okay, I'm sorry, this, minus, let's take the same number, divided by 10, okay, make an uh, truncated, so int, integer, okay, and then multiply it by 10. Okay, so this formula will extract the last digit. Why? Because we subtract we subtract the first digit out of this number multiplied by 10. So the first digit you you divide this number by 10 and truncate it to the next down to the next integer. So in this case that would be 4. If you multiply by 10 you get 40. So you subtract 40 from 43 and you get 3, okay? So let's take this and, uh, I'm sorry, let's delete this and put it here in the formula, okay? Instead of D35, we take this second time, control C, and so this should print the last digit right here in cell number D35. Essentially we tested it right here, we experimented, it works, so we extract the first digit, multiply it by 10 and subtract from the whole thing. Check this out. You see 3, 4, 5, it's supposed to go to 9 and then go back to 0. 9, 0, 1, 
2, check that out. 13, 14, 15, 5, 16, 6, 18, 8. So it works right. So now the macro will run in a loop and extract the last second. Let's do another thing. Let's stop this macro. So place the cursor in the macro and uh, hit the reset button. Okay, stop. So right now let's um, remove this part of the macro that prints the number of seconds here. Okay, the second digit of the seconds. So delete this and um, instead of assigning this to a cell, let's assign it to a variable. Let's say sec, sec okay? And we can define the variable right here on top. I'm gonna delete most of this stuff. We don't need it really, okay? We just keep one of them because we will need these two statements. So I'm just keeping them so we can uh, copy this little code here, here in the second macro. So we declare a variable, so dim as dimension, sec as integer, okay? So we assign the second digit of the seconds, so the fast moving seconds to a variable called sec. And when we start the macro, I want to take all these 10, I'm zooming out, all these 10 sprites and paste them somewhere here, okay? Let's, let's make the box a little bit bigger. So we're gonna paste it here, paste them here. How do we do that? Let's pick up the first one, okay? So this is, uh, let me see. S20, okay? So let's, cop let's copy this, okay? Control C and paste it here. And let's say, instead of B, let's say S to zero, S to zero. And let's make this equal to, let's say 200, ah, 100. And this equal to 100. So essentially we take this shape, okay? Let's move it around, let's move it away. And when the macro starts, it will take this shape and move it 100 units, 100 pixels to the right from this point and 100 units down to this point, from this point. So let's check it out. Run it, you see, brought it in. If we put, uh, let's say here, instead of 150 on the vertical, Let's stop this, it's still running, 50. It's gonna bring it somewhere here. Okay, good. Now, instead of 100, let's say, copy this and say is equal to itself. Okay, let's stop the macro. But replace this with box, box. Why, you see this rectangle? Let's rename it box. So right now, if we run the macro, let's copy this, and here top, it will align this digit, okay, with a box, probably it's going to be something like this, okay, something like that, check it out, okay. Now let's say box, uh, let's align it to the right plus 50. I'm sorry, let's stop this, plus 50. And align it from the top plus, let's say 50. So run it, good. Let's 
let's make all of these bigger, a little bit bigger. So grab them from here and that's good. Let me see. Mm. Yeah. Okay. So I run it again and I'm going to adjust the box. That's about right. The nice thing about this is the following. If we move the box here and we run the macro, the digit will fall in the middle. The macro will bring the digit because it's a relative referencing to the box. It's relative reference to the box. Okay, check this out. Stop it and run it. So now, no matter where we move the box, when we run the macro, it brings the digit inside. Another thing I would like to do, instead of acting on each shape, so S20, S21, S22, let's uh, write a loop. So otherwise, if we don't have a loop here, an initialization loop, okay? We need to write this 10 times. We need to copy these two lines 10 times and replace, you see, 0 in the next two lines with a 1, in the next two lines with a 2. So we will write a loop, okay? Let me uh, stop the macro. So we will like a for loop, okay? For i is equal to 0, 2, 9. The for loop ends with next i okay correct is to write step one and instead of uh, this we will use something called concatenation i'm going to write it here and you need to google what it is con what concatenation is you see this zero we can replace it with i so you need to read what concatenation is. Concatenation is essentially a text, um, how do you say, is a text trick in uh, programming. So if I put this S2 underscore, because all these shapes right here, all these digits, all these digits are named S2 underscore, and then something different for each digit from 0 to 9. So I can put S2 underscore in quotation marks and then an ampersand and I. Okay. So it will run through all these things and bring them in in the same position. Okay. Same thing here ampersand I. Check this out. So the program will run this loop 10 times from 0 to 9. And it will take each of these elements and put them in in the same position. OK, check this out. OK, you see, took them all there. And to prove you, check this out. They're all there. Let's run it again. Stop it and run it again and stop it. So this is good. If we move the shape, the box, because we did an absolute referencing, I'm sorry, relative referencing in space with the box, we relative to the box is always the positions of this, the position of these um, digits is uh, set with respect to the box position. So check this, check this out. See, all went there. And now, let's um, change this loop, this timing loop, OK? Inside the loop, we need to stop the macro. So inside the loop, we say this. We will use similar thing. 
4. Let's copy this whole loop, okay? Control C. So we copy the loop. So this loop happens when we start. When we initialize, when, when we start the timing macro. But it doesn't happen every loop cycle. We copied it inside the loop and uh, change it the following way. There's a property called visibility. I think visibility, let me see. Actually visible, okay? Visible, okay? And this, sh let's put it false. If this is false, okay? The shape will not be visible. If it's true, the shape will be visible. So every loop, every big loop cycle. So here there's a do loop, and inside there's a nested in is nested inside a for loop. So every loop cycle we make all the shapes invisible. Okay. So this will go through all nine, all ten shapes from zero to nine, makes them in, uh, invisible. And then we can copy this. And once the loop is finished, all of them are invisible. Control V, put it here, and make one visible. Which one? The one that is equal to the second, to the value of second. Okay, sec. Control C. Instead of I, we put here control V sec. And this will be visible, so this is true. So this being said, let's run it. Okay. Okay, one shape. Okay, it seems one of the shapes, uh, maybe two shapes got uh, altered dimensionally. So let's uh, make them all visible. Format shape, dimension, let's see, 7.45, 4.9, okay, 7.45, 4.9, let's make sure they all have the same dimension, 7.45, 4.9. So now they all have the same dimension. Uh, because when I ran, I saw some little movement, lateral movement. I didn't like it. All should be perfectly the same dimension and overlapping each other. So let's see now if it runs. Right now is good. It seems very steady. The digits seem to overlap each other perfectly. So when we brought them in, by mistake, we probably messed up a couple of them, a little bit. So what we did here, when the macro, the big macro time test starts, we initialize by bringing all the shapes 
in the middle of this rectangle and then we run in a time loop okay, in an infinite loop that time is calculated and make everything invisible except one the one that is the name has the sec inside sec can vary from 0 to 9 so when sec is let's say 7 only the seventh digit is made visible everything else we ran through a loop made everything else invisible but after we made everything else invisible we run one more statement and we make visible the one that has the name uh, the one whose name is including this sec the number of seconds so that's what we did so let's run it again and I would like to add an extra feature here declare another variable so dim let's call it uh, mode Mm. let's try mode might be a dedicated word but uh, let's let's try as boolean and also when we start the macro let's introduce a clause an if statement that will start and stop the macro so if mode is equal to true then mode is equal to false else mode is equal to true and if what does this big if statement do, do? It's essentially a toggler. It toggles mode from true to false. So whenever this macro is started, the variable, the boolean vari variable mode will turn from true to false or from false to true. It toggles. And then we can go here at the main loop, timing loop, the do loop, and turn it from an infinite loop into a conditional loop so while do while mode is equal to true so only when mode is equal to true only then will run this otherwise it will stop it so we added a very easy start stop uh, start stop uh, function so let's check it out start it you see it starts stop it and click on this box and assign a macro what time test okay so now when we click on this it will start when we click a second time it will stop when we click again it will start It's a toggle attached to the box of the clock itself okay check this out click on it it runs click on it it stops click on it it runs click on it it stops and uh, I want to remind you we also have this feature stop it we need to right click it in order to select it now because it has a macro you cannot just left click and select it you need to right click because if you left click it if you left click it it's gonna start the macro so right click and then you can move it okay you see but once you start the macro it brings the digits inside stop it right click move it here and then start it again it places its own digits centered in the box and stop it and this being said in the next tutorial we will add more digits to the clock don't forget to subscribe and give me a like or some comments thank you